And this is what makes people rich. When I buy these big real estate buildings, all I, I think what I'm doing is buying another flow. Easiest way for me to do it. I'm just going to buy that flow and let that building sit there and not even worry about it. Then I come to work as soon as I close that one deal and I buy that flow. Let's say I bought 40 million. That's $2.4 million worth of income. I took 40 million. I shoved the whole 40 million. My 40 million is no different than your 450. If it's all you have, it's all you have. Everybody agree? 450 goes in, 40 million goes in. It's the same. We're both at zero again. The difference is I got income coming in that I'm not paying attention to. I don't spend time on that activity. I have that building's big enough to support the building and manage itself. I actually bought payroll, employees, people, managers, etc. So now I got this new drip coming in, and then I'm focused right here. I don't have any money. Stay broke. Hustle. Oh man, hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. Right there, right there. <laughs> yeah. right there. We, we change our names so many times, guys. All right, Passive Money Plan, welcome back. My name is Alex, that's Kirby. Um, all right, so interesting video. I like his concept. If you stay broke, you'll keep hustling. Similar to what uh, Robert Kiyosaki talks about, how his rich dad taught him, pay yourself first. And if you pay yourself first and you're missing money for your bills, you'll work hard enough to find a way to get that money. So I like it. But uh, what do you think on it? What, what well, are my, you? my biggest takeaway was what he said at the end. Stay broke and keep hustling. I mean, that's that's the philosophy that we go with. And what do you mean by stay broke? That don't mean get a paycheck and then go out there and buy the next Louis, Gucci, or Fendi. <laughs> yeah. That's not what he means by that. <laughs> what, he, what he means by stay broke is you get paid mm -hmm. and then you look to deploy as much okay. capital as you can to the next investment, to the next investment or the same investment. It don't matter. And then you live on the least amount possible so you stay broke, that will keep you hungry to keep grinding to make more. And I understand he's talking about, you know, big residential, I mean, big residential, 50, 250, 400 unit apartment complex. That every average day American, the people that we talk to, you could do the same thing with without commercial lending and just did, you know, one to four units and just kept doing that over and over and over again. But what he's saying is true. The same thing that I do. When I buy a property, I put a team in place that they manage it. I don't sit here and think about rental properties all day, every day. The only time they call me if they go over a threshold limit of the limit that they're allowed to spend to fix a repair. That's the only time they reach out to me. Besides that, it just runs, runs, runs. So the money that's coming in, I'm just stacking the money up again, stacking the money up again, and I'm already looking for the next deal so I can throw it out there to go broke. Now I got another deal, so now... Let's just say I start off with one rental property. So now that income's coming in. I'm still working the nine to five. I'm still grinding, grinding, grinding. And I'm grinding while still looking for another deal. So now that I pulled up the money and I throw it at another deal, set the team in place, I go back to grinding. Because once you start getting multiple streams of income or multiple rental properties, what's going to happen is your, your bucket to do another deal is going to come back faster. It's going to come back faster. Like when I started, uh, the first two properties I bought, I think I blew like the liquid cash I had. That was all the cash I had. And then it took a minute before that money started coming in and generating. And then plus, the you know, my nine to five job that I was working so I can generate the capital to come up with something else. But then after I start banging them out more and more, now I'm just looking up. Every time I buy a deal, I'm just looking for the next deal, looking for the next deal, looking for the next deal, because so much money is coming in from those past sources of income that I'm ready to deploy it. I'm not holding it to be like, oh yeah, um, I'm about to go buy me a new Lambo. No, I'm going to send it out there so to bring back more money. And I'll keep doing that over and over and over again. And that's how it's done. Those are the you know key things that I took from what he said. I mean, I know he was talking about the big real estate deals that he does, but the average everyday person buying one unit to four units and still staying within that FHA conventional loan range can still do the same thing and replicate the same thing he's talking. And, you know, it make less than $400,000 a year and be happy. Yeah. No, it's an interesting point because, like, the mentality to have on that, um, like, I, I guess that's kind of what I'm doing. Like, after buying this property, like, I felt I felt broke. And then now I'm saving and I'm seeing my, you know, my, my cash amount come back to kind of where it was. 
and um all i can think about is i'm about to go broke again <laughs> so <laughs> but i mean <laughs> but it, i mean like you said it's true like the more cash flow you can build you know once you get your first second third fourth each property you start to start to accumulate that money you use to go broke again is easier to replenish and yeah i can totally foresee that happening but yeah it's a uh, you got to keep hustling can't stay broke the whole time <laughs> yeah you just stay broke and keep hustling and and that's that's just the mantra that you know in my house that we always use it's just like 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 the deal that i got coming up i'm already i'm already looking for the next deal while this is still closing i'm already looking for the next deal and then now in my house it used to be oh when can we do the next deal now it's okay i just know you're going to do another deal and that's exactly how that's exactly how i i stage it is just I keep going. And then once this property, I set the team. Team's already set. I haven't even closed on the property. Team's already set. Management company. I know the contractors. I know everything. We've got the tenants in place. The whole the whole night. The only thing that we're going to have to talk about is if a repair comes up and it's a big repair or when it's time to raise the rent. That's it. And I just go on. It's just a forgot about property. The I don't think about any of the properties again until you know something comes up. And a manager reaches out to me. People always ask me, oh, how can you manage it all? I don't. I set it up right initially so I don't have to worry about it. And as much as people on their cell phones all day, every day, looking at social media and a whole bunch of garbage, I can look at an email that I'm being sent by one of the managers of my properties and text back and say, okay, do this. And keep going on about life. And then the other the other part you said was um, people always want to ask, oh, when you're going to sell it and enjoy life? <laughs> I, hate, I hate that word. <laughs> because the, the thing is, the thing is, is I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it handsomely. But that's all people look at is, OK, you got a rental property. You bring in money. So when are you going to the club, when are you going to buy when are you going to buy that uh, Land Rover or something like that? No. I'm going to get the money and go create more money. My family's taken care of. My son still driving me crazy. So, <laughs> so they're fine. They're fine. I'm not, I'm not like got my I ain't got my family sitting in the house with you know holes in the ceiling and we over here struggling eating ramen noodles or nothing like that. But all the extra capital, if we don't need it, again, need it, not want it. If we don't need it, why don't we send it out there to make more money? And that's and that's really what Grant uh, is really talking about. Just keep sending it out there to make more money. Stay broke, meaning being broke will make you drive. You said it in, like Robert Kiyosaki said. If you pay yourself first, you take care of your bills, but you don't have enough, it'll make you hungrier to go out there and grab more. Just like I said, if the 20, 40 percent that you're supposed to save for your check to live off of, if you can't live off that, then you need to grow the amount of money you have. So you can still live on 40%. Not just sit here and be content like, oh, well, you know, I get paid. I pay the rent. I pay the lights. I can spend $100 on groceries and I just sit in the house all day. Hell no. Go out there and hustle. And that's my view. With all that being said, guys, if you have a comment, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, uh, share with everyone you know, and we'll see you guys in the next video.